Are you ready to master the waves of medical device product development? Well, wax up your surfboard because you are listening to Inspired by Amua. And here is your medical device product development expert, that Hawaiian-hearted hostess who will help you hang 10, Megan Alonso. Aloha! You're listening to Inspired by Amua, where we help you master the waves of medical product development. Each week, we interview guests that educate, guide, and inspire to give you the skills you need so you and your product can hang 10. If this is your first time listening, Amua is spelled I-M-U-A, and it's a Hawaiian word. It means to advance forward with passion despite rough waves. There are plenty of those in medical product development, but keep listening because we've got you covered. So today's episode is pretty cool. And what I did is I interviewed a guest by the name of Charlie Burney. So Charlie has his own podcast. It's called The Launch Podcast, Stories About Startups. So Charlie has his own company. It's uh, podcastvillage.com, and that's headquartered out of Launch Workplaces, which you can find at launchworkplaces.com. And anyway, they collaborate on this podcast together, this launch podcast. And what we did is we recorded this episode. I extracted the highlights that I think you would like from it, but so did he. So his is all of his editing is done by him. He's going to have different bits and pieces of this conversation than I do. So I encourage you to go head over to that podcast and listen. It's the launch podcast, and you can find that over on soundcloud.com. So just search launch podcast. So in addition to that, I have a few other cool things that I'm up to. The next one is that since we're in a new month, I'm recording this on May 1st, by the way, and I started a book club. So I'm giving you the opportunity to get a free audio book. Yeah, that's right. Something free. And most of the startups that I talk to, when I ask them what their favorite book is for business or what they would recommend that a new startup reads, so many people have recommended The Lean Startup. So you can grab a copy of that for free and listen to it. And you can do that by going to amua-services.com forward slash free book. And then from there, you'll be heading over to audible.com and then you'll sign up for a free trial and you get a free book when you do that. So I would love for you to do that. Let's keep the conversation going about the lean startup. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. If there's anything, if you were to rewrite something in there, let me know. Okay, the next cool thing that I'm up to is next Monday, May 8th, we're going to do something else new on the podcast. I'm going to do a live Q&A podcast, and this is actually going to be housed on Facebook. So you can head on over to Facebook, check out the Amua Services page. I will be going live from there next Monday, May 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So catch that on there. That's 2 p.m. Pacific time. So what we'll do, I'm going to link this to a Facebook post on Facebook. And if you don't think you can be on Facebook at that particular time to watch my live stream and ask me questions on the live stream and hopefully give me some thumbs up and woohoo on the live stream, hey, you can post a question in advance. And then that way, when I get on, I'll answer your questions first. Well, not necessarily first. I'll, I'll mix them in with the people that are live. Uh, so again, I'll link that post, but I do want you to catch me actually live. So you'll see the video. You've probably seen how that works. If someone goes live, then you can interact with them and they can acknowledge you and answer your questions. So let's do that. Uh, this will be pretty fun. So I'll give you all the links in there on our show notes page. It's just at amua-services.com. Click on the podcast tab, check it out there. So without any further ado, we'll jump into this week's episode. Please welcome Charlie Burney, and we're going to get the conversation started right away. So hold on, here we go. 
one of the neatest things about working at Launch Coworking is the events that come and are held, whether it's how to write a book or how to analyze your, uh, they're doing a profile, uh, analyzing your personality, I think here this Friday, Megan. But I've got Megan Alonzo with me here, or Megan's got me with her on her podcast, and we're going to talk about what she's going to bring when she visits Launch. And I forget the date completely. That's escaped me. So maybe you can update me. Sure. So it's May 11th. That is Thursday, May 11th, and it's 5.30 to 7.30 at the Rockville location. And what's going to be happening is I, I love to build community wherever I go. So I recently moved to the area and what better way to get to know people by planning an event. So that's what we've done. It's for med tech and biotech startups. So if that's your world, if that's who you are, or if you're interested in that and you're not there yet, then come to this event. You'll be able to meet a lot of great people. And meet some of the players and sort of pick your brains a Exactly. Bit. Yeah. So you can find out more about that. It's at amua-services.com forward slash events. And I know you're probably thinking, what? What did you say? It's amua, <laughs> I-M-U-A. And fun, quick fact. So amua is actually a Hawaiian word that means to advance forward with passion, despite rough waves. And I know there's always Whoa. rough waves <laughs> as being. That's nice. Yeah. It, there's always rough waves when you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're in med tech and biotech, because we all know how heavily yeah. regulated this is. Well, what are, uh, can you give me just a, a snapshot of, of some of the people that you, you might have worked with that I might have heard of? One of them is down in Manassas and they just, they just raised quite a bit of VC funding. Huh. So Series Nano and okay. they were, they were in, in, ha- in an in-house incubator, I guess, out of George Mason, the Manassas campus there. And then they, <laughs> they moved across the street. So if you don't know already, Prince William County here, which is Southwest Virginia, Southwest of DC, I meant. So they have quite the initiative to attract biotech and medtech startups. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was not aware of that. So that's a whole initiative that we could be aware of. And you would probably talk about that too, uh, uh, a week from Thursday, right? May 11th. Definitely. Actually, that would be perfect timing because they're having a lunch and learn on May 11th. <laughs> so I can go eat lunch and I can learn. <laughs> and then at the networking event, I can teach others Talk about, about it. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect because you know, you don't want to have it this Thursday because you know what that is, right? May the 4th. The May the 4th be with yes, you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just doing a little Star Wars talk before, before uh, you and I connected here on Skype. Well, uh, and have you been out to launch at Rockville yet? Since you're so new, I think I, I can have ask that not. So I haven't ah. been to any of your locations. Any of our, you have not launched. You I, have, not launched I launch. have not. And so um, part of the deal at launch is so gracious to have our group meeting there. So we have at least three meetings at launch, and then we'll see how that goes. And then we may keep meeting there or we may mix it up and meet some other places. So I, I want to kind of spread the love around. So maybe Rockville, Rockville, I know Tyson's, and you can tell me more about this here in a second. Uh, Tyson's is close to where I am. And then you have right. a, a Gaithersburg and well, here, now I'll turn it over to you. So tell tell us more about launch, Charlie. <laughs> it's <laughs> I'm happy to. I, I was in commercial real estate property management in an earlier life. And the whole co-working movement is really something that I find absolutely fascinating. I just toured 1776 downtown last week. And the, the pro and the con of downtown is you're downtown. And you yeah. have to park and you have to fight the traffic. And uh, But their resources were really impressive. And they're sort of a niche unto themselves. They have they have a, sort of a marching order. But there's other, you know, there there are co-working spaces that didn't exist when I was a manager. And I find it fascinating. I think the whole commercial office space movement seems to be shifting, at least on the at least in this Washington, DC area. The top of the line, if you will, is launch in Gaithersburg. That's kind of the nicest facility. Okay. Nothing 
at all wrong with the other facilities. The, the key is really what you're getting at is the location. So you may find a class of yours or something you're interested in just works better in one of the other locations. I've typically chosen Rockville for my meetups of the Bethesda podcasting group because it just seems notwithstanding traffic and we do them in the evening that that seems to be the easiest to get to. Tyson's can be, as you already know, I'm sure, can be very problematic in terms of traffic, but it's a huge draw to do. We're going to start doing a podcast class in at the Tyson's office in a few months, I hope. And uh, let's see, Tyson's and Rockville. And they're also sort of in terms of size. Rockville is absolutely the biggest, followed by uh, Gaithersburg, and then Tyson's is the smallest, although mm-hmm. that may be expanded next year. And they're looking at adding new locations as well. I've heard that, that they're expanding and that they're doing some construction work. So it'll yep. be it'll be even better in June or July. So maybe we'll <sighs> shoot for you know, and construction always seems to take longer than they estimate. So maybe we'll yes, hold that for August or September. <laughs> that's right. I know there's been some construction at the Tyson's Corner building. I'm not sure what the you know state of affairs of that is. But they're all nice spaces. And, and I think you'll find that the Tyson's one can really be one that you could use. It's always nice to have something closer to you because I'm sure the drive to Rockville or certainly Gaithersburg, it's going to take you a a little while and you are going to want to plan it around rush hour if you can. Mm -hmm. So since you are are not only the the podcasting producer for the Launch Workplaces podcast, (laughs) but you are also a tenant there. One thing I was curious and one thing that our listeners might not have heard yet is you know, you kind of know what you're getting into when you sign up for a co-working space. So usually people think, okay, this is less expensive than getting my own office. And hey, we have these shared resources. You know, I don't have to buy all this equipment. Uh, but what are some of the hidden benefits that you didn't expect, but you think are pretty cool? Well, and I, I want to give, pro- uh, thank you. I want to give proper call outs to the launch co-working, the launch workplaces staff, because uh, Mark and Colby and Karen do an amazing job of bringing in a little something extra. I think in New Orleans, they call it Lang Yap, and it's called, and it's a little something extra. And I like that expression, just like you like Imwa. And uh, we and also was, have another Hawaiian. So it's, it's okay. Hanaho, Hanaho, which is like a encore when someone's playing music, for instance, yeah. and then you're like, hey, come back out on stage, Hana Ho. So they, I guess you okay. could say they, they give you lots of, lots of Hana Ho's too. Hana which is... Ho. Well, that's it. It's the extras. <laughs> so there will be a wide variety of another podcaster and I just attended one two weeks ago on and how to write a book. And we're going to write a small book together about podcasting. But there are a wide variety of things. I got my headshot done at the Rockville office because that was one of the functions that they brought in. Oh, not, it's not just meetups and meetings and corporate uh, conference room visits or or teleconferencing. It's also events created, you know, with coffee and, and bagels so that we can come in and experience uh, a lecture about Bitcoin or a lecture about financing for startups. There's an angel venture forum series that's here every Wednesday for another two or three weeks. And that's for startups. That's about the pitfalls of the filings and the and the presentations and really very diving into specifics about how to how to get an angel and how to do business with them. Um, so they they bring in a lot of varied content. And I think it's what makes it special. I referred to the uh, to my tour of 1776, and they have an amazing network that they use to communicate once you're in, in the system, and he showed it to me. And they have a lot of functions. I think what Launch does is bring in that type of function for the casual co-working element. And I see many of the day-to-day tenants here at those functions. Obviously, there's people from outside who come because they want to hear you speak or because they want to hear the thing about Bitcoin. But many of the tenants here partake of that on a a very regular basis. Is that what you were getting at? Yeah. Then what about uh, just getting to know your neighbors? Is it very... Now, I've been in some where it's kind of closed door, like people are renting an office and they just go to work in there and they do their thing and they have their door closed all day. But then others are, everyone has their door open and they're talking all day long, or especially the ones that just have the, Hey, you can rent a desk or a cubicle. And some companies make it a point to, Hey, this is the culture of our co-working space. And here's what it's all about. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a fine line because at the end of the day, they just want to get a, a, an inexpensive space. So they're the typical desk co-working client is just trying to get out of his kitchen or his basement or his garage and use those services that you mentioned. But they also want to cross-pollinate. There's a few folks here who I don't know very well, the sort of outgoing, but we also have a couple of just social things. So we'll go down. We're right here at a place called Rio Washingtonian Center. There's a million restaurants and bars around here uh, a lot. And so we will take once or twice or three times a year the opportunity just to go down at happy hour and try to hang out with the with the tenants. But more often than not, it's in the coffee room. We have a large lunch room with coffee and sodas, and we try to uh, congregate and talk. There's a couple of TV viewing areas. But it's a fine line what you're talking about between sort of pushing it too hard and having it sort of grow virally. Just, yeah. And at the end of the day, too, you used to have to get work done. You can't go to a co-working space. It can't all just, be about the stuff you're yeah. having at your super cool office. And that's the fine line. You, you want that stuff to be useful, as you said, I think, a few minutes ago, and you want it to be relevant. And then you want to be able to. I mean, I keep my door open all day long, except when I'm on the phone with you or really trying to finish something. And then I shut the door and I put a little podcast in progress sign on the door. But for the most part, I do encourage an open door. There are several tenants who keep it close. I think there's room for everybody. Um, but I personally, just to once more go back to what you're saying about the something extra, I really like the way Launch Workplaces is doing it. I think they're ramping up and it's becoming more and more a part of, of why this experience is, is very, it's very fun. Mm -hmm. So Great. So, and you're here, I'll, I'm going to do it again. So May 11th, and I can't remember what you said, what time of, oh no, you're at Rockville on May 11th. Rockville, May 11th, 5.30 p.m. That's okay. I put in 5 p.m. Okay. And so you'll want to make sure to, you. my only piece of advice for you is come a little early. Okay. Because the traffic up, the traffic up 270 is, is brutal. Okay. So for those of you listening. Yeah. Coming up this, the 270. You might want to try yeah. to come a little early. We, we've got coffee and, and stuff there for you. But the commute up 270 gets started pretty early. Now, it's an easy drive because you're just getting off on Montrose Road and going to uh, uh, 12017 Locks Road right a quarter of a mile from the exit. Mm -hmm. But you might want to look at your Google map and see how the traffic is building and maybe come out a little early if you want and use the co-working space. Yeah. Yeah, because there's free Wi-Fi for everybody and there's tons of room. So if anybody does actually want to come early, they would be welcome. Great. Yeah, and I'll I'll definitely be up there early so you guys can come and we can have a chat. So speaking of chat, for those of you listening that normally listen to Charlie's podcast that don't know me very well, let's see, an interesting fact about Emua is that we're trying to build a community of entrepreneurs and startups in the med tech and biotech space of 1 million by 2020. So, wow. Yeah. That I not know. No. So <laughs> I, I'm under the gun and I want to meet, meet <laughs> as many people as I can and help as many people as I can. And definitely one of the ways I do that is this free content on podcasts. Uh, yes. I don't know about you, but isn't it, isn't it amazing when you log on to see your stats and you see how many people from different countries are listening it's the to the countries you. Uh, always <laughs> blows your mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the two guys in some country you've never heard of before. <laughs> yeah. So there's that we've got a, a vlog, like a, like video resources for you. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes they're just of myself walking my dog, Abby, and I, I'll have a little piece of advice or a quote. Other times <laughs> it's a more formal video at teaching you something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got lots of free guides, uh, checklists, uh, little quizzes for you to take. And then I, I've got some pretty cool things going on as well. I've got a pre-accelerator, which you've probably heard of an accelerator before. Uh, and some of those are awesome, like Y Combinator or 500 Startups. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're very, very competitive too. And okay. so what I've done is I've brought the accelerator and I put it all online. So it's virtual. Anybody can do it from anywhere. Okay. And it's, again, it's specifically for if you have an idea for a med tech or biotech product right. and you start at this idea stage and, Hey, I have this idea. I'm not sure what to do with it. 
And we go from that to building a fundable business in a hundred days. And then after those hundred days, that's where so you're cool. exposed to investors, to development partners. And right. even if you've been, now you don't just have to be starting out. Maybe you started and you've just kind of tinkered a few years or a few months. If you really want to make some progress, then that's, that's, that's an excellent resource for you too. Yeah. And what, how was it when you first started? I'm, I'm fascinated by you doing this for your industry. You say you're one of two or three other shows. I'm just, it just warms the cockles of my heart that you're, you're, you're using podcasting for this segment. I'm not sure everybody would have thought of it, you know? And so you, oh, you told me you got on Eon Fire and you started to read how he was promoting using podcasts. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, you guys listening have probably all read blog posts or watched videos and the cool thing about podcasting, this is a, this is a little secret that we're letting you in on, but <laughs> so when you have a podcast, you can do lots of different things with it. So I do have my podcast and that is disseminated out to, let's see, iTunes. If you put it on a syndicated source right. feed, then it's syndicated to different channels. So iTunes and Google play and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and probably even some more that I'm missing. But I also put it on my website and then I write show notes that are like a blog post with it so that it's text formatted. And I put that on, I turn the podcast audio into a video, put it on YouTube. I put it on LinkedIn as a published article. So what I'm getting at here is it, a content machine and right. it's a lot more content than if you just wrote a blog post. And I guess to be fair, maybe you could write that blog post and you could publish an article on LinkedIn. So that's two, that's good. But with podcasting, I get seven to 10 different right. media channels out right. of one podcast. And that's, I, I completely agree. And you're able to use it as a tool to you know, to expand. So you're expanding your audience as you expand your business. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's a way for you to, to interview someone perhaps that you have, that you want to interview or to talk about a product that you want to help develop. Mm -hmm. So that's, what's exciting to me about it. And that's what I try to do at Podcast Village is say, Hey, I've got a lawyer who's sort of on the fence and he's trying to decide how to use it. And uh, I'm saying, this is an incredibly easy way to repurpose content in his case forever. Uh, it's a state law that he wants to talk about. And it's very exciting because he's got something that could easily be co uh, text content. The only the only thing that I use when I'm describing this that you didn't, Megan, is the difference between text and hearing your voice to my ear or my voice to your ear. It's an intimate connection that you can't get through text. Exactly. So when I'm talking to you and you're walking the dog, uh, which is how I listen to most of my podcasts too, by the way, uh, Labrador. And uh, so I listen to a lot and I realize I'm making a connection with that person and because I'm listening to the tone of their voice, I'm listening to their passion, if you will. Uh, and I think that makes it a unique experience. So I think you get, I, I'm absolutely on the same page with you. You get so many different ways to, to repurpose the content. I'm probably missing a few, <laughs> but we do the videos as well. We're going to add some cameras in here so we can start doing some teleconferencing and, and web webinars and stuff like that. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of, of demand for that right now. Mm -hmm. But continue on what, what we do podcast wise. So another thing is, uh, so have you had people email you or tell you when they meet you? Oh my gosh, I just, I feel like I know you so well <laughs> because they, they listen to you and they start to get your story and what you're up to. Like I, I talked about how, oh, we're going to be moving and I'm not sure where we're going to go. And then, hey, we are moving. We're going to be moving to the D.C. area. And hey, if you're in the D.C. area, we just moved here. And then I talk about my dog a lot. So people, <laughs> when they first meet me, like they, they know all these details of me. But I don't know yeah, anything I, I about them. Dog, I know you were a dog person. <laughs> I'll tell you my, I have, a, I have a really silly story about this because I was at a startup meeting. There's a, a group you should look up called the Veneta Project. It's not all uh, bio. Uh, medical though, um, but it's startups anyway. Uh, and I was at this conference uh, at this uh, evening sort of presentation of several of the uh, members. And this woman came up to me and said, I know you, I've heard your voice, your podcast, Charlie. And I just started mm -hmm. to melt because I have this theory. You can't give yourself a nickname. 
But the moment she called me Podcast Charlie, I said, I'm claiming it. I want Podcast Charlie. And so it, you're absolutely right. It was just made my whole evening. She said, I've listened to your podcast. I thought, oh, my family doesn't listen to my podcast. <laughs> 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 but you did. So she's she gave me my nickname and I'm accepting it. So mm-hmm. If you look at my ridiculous Twitter account, you'll see it says Podcast Charlie. <laughs> so, no, it's so so much fun when you run into someone who's listened and you're right. You don't know them at all. And they've listened to your voice and the way you talk about things. And I don't know. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. So this might be valuable for people to hear since you're in the podcasting world. Enlighten us a little bit about why why it's so, I mean, from a public relations standpoint, uh, how, how people can really leverage if they're a podcast guest. And by the way, hint, hint, if you would like to be <laughs> on my podcast or Charlie's podcast, Absolutely. you can. Looking, right? Yeah. You just have to reach out. But from just so it's not me saying this, I want to hear your opinion on on what how you can leverage that PR like that that is press for you and what what you can Absolutely. do as a guest and and run with that. Well, as a guest, as a host, um, you can use it in in similar ways. I've got a longstanding client who has been doing it intermittently for his consulting business. He's a wonderful guy, and and sort of we're trying to figure out what's the next what what is our next uh, attack. He just had a nationally known speaker come down. We're actually going to interview him live on Skype this week, but having the podcast gives him the opportunity to have this guy's back as a guest. And he didn't say to the fellow he that, you know, he brought down and, and hosted it was, I think, very big deal, if you catch my drift. And he could say to him, hey, thank you so much for this affair. We had 100 people. It was very successful. But th- now he's also said, hey, can, can you come on next week on the show? And of course, the guy said yes, because he wants to promote himself and his brand. So it's it's the simple part about using it to promote your, your personal or your business brand. It's so useful. Hey, I got on a podcast. Please check out this link. I think one of the most useful ways, Megan, is in your email, um, just the signature that says, check out this episode. So if you were a guest, if I was a guest on your show, I would say, hey, I just got on Megan Alonso's show, Imwa, and I really want you to check it out. We had a we had a lot of fun, and just put that hyperlink in there. I think sometimes people forget that, but I like the leverage of using meeting new people um, and finding ways to have them as guests, whether it's on Skype or face to face, and getting them involved in and in using podcasting. Again, I think the guest and the host can use it that way to to make open new connections. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So I'm, you know, we're actually sort of marketing. Why should you podcast in some of those terms. It really opens uh, a friend of mine and I, Debbie uh, DeChambeau, are working on a package and she's actually taking it to insurance companies saying you should think about a podcast because it can create new opportunities for you to talk to your clients, talk to your peers. And it's exactly what it does. So it gives you the opportunity to start many more conversations in a professional setting, I think, than, than you would have. Mm-hmm. And when you're a guest, it's a it's a chance for you to get your brand out on the other person's circle of influence and try to get more followers to to what you're doing. So I think the guests have a lot of opportunities more than the hosts sometimes. Depends. Yeah. So and if, if people want to hear more about podcasting, you have your studio at launch and yes. tell, tell us about that. Not only if you're unable to make it to the event on May 11th, Right. then you can still go to launch and you can get a tour and find out all the great things that they have to offer. And you can yep. stop by and see Charlie. But tell our audience what what it is that you do for them. If they're local to the DMV area and they want to have a podcast, uh, what what goes on in your studio? <laughs> well, it's a wide variety of shows we've produced almost 400 individual episodes and a whole wide variety of, of different shows or content. But if you're interested in podcasting, come and visit the launch co-working the launch workplaces in Gaithersburg and my office, my studio, it's always a stop on the tour. And if I'm not involved, they'll jump up and, and invite you in and sit you down in the chair and record you. But that's often what happens. People will come in and uh, the controller of the state of Maryland came in, saw the microphones and sat down so fast. It was it was uh, really quite extraordinary because <laughs> he saw an opportunity, you know, for, for good old fashioned publicity and, and reach. So he, he was great. So we, we would talk to you about what your idea is what your what your influence is, what your goals are. And then if you're interested in making a show 
and and trying it out. I usually do episode zero, what I call episode zero, for anybody for free because it it's as you knew probably the first time you did it, hearing it come out of the computer was a different experience. So the first time for most of my clients who who are new to it, when I record them, when I put the earphones on and they hear their voice through the microphones, it's a different experience. And then when they hear it coming out of their computer or their phone, it's a completely different experience. For my closest friend, sort of a light bulb went off and he said, I get it. But until I sat him down and did what we call episode zero, he didn't really get it. So we have people come in and we talk about the show. Uh, the consulting group next door is doing a series uh, about one a month. Um, I've got two or three other regular weekly clients and I do a series with a, a government organization downtown. All of it's different. Whether We help you choose whether you want just a, a soliloquy you know, or if you want a spoken word podcast, a conversation, uh, some local podcasters come in to do the Skype calls. I don't know, you probably use a mix minus setup, I'm not sure, but to, to get the voice in um, a little cleaner, at least on one end. And so we provide sort of everything, whether it's just coming in, I have one client, Megan, who comes in on Saturdays, I come in on the Saturday and all he wants is his voice. And then I clip it, I trim it and I upload it and he's out the door. Mm -hmm. So I do sort of from the bottom with no music, no intro, no nothing, no artwork. Um, he just wants the the, uh, the hyperlink with his with his talk. And so we would do any kind up to, you know, a, 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 a 10 part series where you'd have all of the artwork and the promotion and stuff that, that you're already used to. But it's a it's a podcast production studio. So anybody who's interested, please let me know. We're on the web at podcastvillage.com. Well, that's good. And <laughs> with launch workplaces, Let's close and give a, a shout out to them. And the best thing you like about launch and where to find launch. Launch work. I think it's launchworkplaces.com. If you Google launch workplaces, it is the first that comes up. I believe the Gaithersburg location is the first one that is on that but you would go to their their website. Uh, you can book a tour through there. They have a lot of events. I think the thing that's my favorite is it's a it's a very fun environment. You know, when the soccer game is on, uh, the big TV in the lobby is showing that, and everybody might be talking about it. It's a very open, low stress environment. It's a nice place to work. You know, uh, and that's the best part. Sure, it's great having coffee and so and all of those things. I think the second best thing is the events, and I keep talking to Karen because I know she does a great many of of this and Mark. Uh, Ed Colby, everyone does a great job of booking the events, but it's a it's a nice variety. It's really what is very comfortable. They're not every single day, but they're often enough that you feel like you've really got a little something, a little something extra. Like I said, I forgot the word, the ho, hona. Hana ho. Yeah. Hana ho. Yeah. Hana ho. <laughs> so, but that's my favorite thing. Get a cup of coffee. My guests can all have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And, uh, but it's just an open, there are offices with doors like this one, uh, and that's what I needed for a podcast studio. But there's a, a large co-working place where you can go. And if I have other uh, podcasters using the studio, I just take my laptop and go out into the lobby and, and set myself down on a desk. So it's a simple environment, uh, not too complicated, but very clean and very, you know, very open and, and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. And if any of those of you listening do have an idea that you think, hey, maybe I should turn this into a product or start a business around it, and you're not exactly sure yet, I have a fun quiz for you. So you can go to amua-services.com forward slash good idea. And again, amua is spelled I-M-U-A. So you can go check that out. I kind of have to check that out. <laughs> Is this for any kind of invention? Or? It's, it's, it's med tech or biomedical or oh, biotech. Yeah. So, so, so my podcast hat's not Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Well, Megan, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to meeting you in Rockville uh, a week from May 4th. Ha -ha. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Excited to see you there. Have a great afternoon and I will see you there. And thanks for letting me be on your show. And thanks for being so much on launch podcast. It was great. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks for joining me on today's episode and listening to that. I did want to remind you two things. Number one, get your free copy of the lean startup. So you go to amua-services.com forward slash free book. You can be taken to audible.com, get a free trial of audible get your free book while you're at it. And then the second thing, I will be going live on Facebook Live next Monday, 
May 8th. And I want to know your questions about anything, really. Hopefully it's about medical product development. <laughs> so catch me live, catch me on the live stream over on my Mua Services Facebook page. But hey, you already know you can't listen to it live or you can't watch it live. That's okay because it stays on my page. It's not going anywhere. You can always see that video later. And I want you to post your questions in advance. So I will link out to this Facebook page. If you guys could all just post your questions on this one Facebook post, that makes it super easy for me. And I will catch you back here. That episode, like I said, will be live on Facebook as it's happening on May 8th. But in the podcast format, it will be released the next day on May 9th. So you can also check us back here on whatever medium you're listening to the podcast on. And until the next episode, Emua. Mahalo for joining us. If you're new to riding the waves of medical device product development, or if you've been in development for a while already, Inspired by Amua is here to surf with you. Want to be a master of the waves? Text HANG10, that's H-A-N-G-T-E-N, to 44222. We'll send you the most common wipeouts companies make in product development so you can avoid them and reach master wave status. Again, that's HANG10 to 44222. We publish a new episode every Tuesday, so catch us at inspiredbyamua.com. Emua! Emua!